Now that our dashboard is complete for monitoring a simple Express.js API, let's move on to defining alert rules for Prometheus. We will add two rules, one for if the API is experiencing a lot of coin flip requests, and another for if a Docker container is not running. In the next video, we will connect these rules to Alert Manager and a Discord webhook, where firing alerts will display in a Discord server of your choice. Okay, the first step is we're going to go back into our coin flip API directory and I'm going to open up docker compose.yml and I'm going to change some of the mounting volumes or what we're mounting for two of our containers. The first is C advisor and I'm going to add a new volume here which is going to give us some special metrics for uh, docker containers. So var run docker dot sock uh, to var run docker dot sock. So this is mounting from the host of the container and the permissions on this are going to be read write. And then in Prometheus, we're going to change this line 35 here. So instead of mounting just the prometheus.yml file, we're going to mount the entire Prometheus directory as you can see. And then the permissions on here are going to be read only. So the reason why we're doing this is so that no matter however many files are in Prometheus, they'll get mounted as a volume for the Prometheus container and we won't have to have a bunch of lines for each file in this directory. With the mounts changed, let's go ahead and build this. So just like before, it's docker compose up. You can add the build flag just to make sure things are new. All right, now that stuff's up and running, let's go hop over to the browser. And if we refresh localhost colon 9090, we should get Prometheus. And if we refresh localhost 5000, we should get our server. And the endpoint is flip dash coins. Uh, and then you pass in the times parameter. Let's say I want to flip it 300 times. So we get our result back in JSON. When we come over to the Prometheus dashboard, I'll show you the metric that we can use to see if a container is down. And that's container last scene, like this. If we execute it, We'll get a bunch of different metrics back for container last seen, but what's important to focus on is these top five, and they have to do with each container that's running in our Docker Compose stack. And the value of this metric is actually a timestamp. So you can see the last time it was seen is increasing because C advisor is pinging each container for this metric. The way we can tell if a container is down is by taking the current time and then subtracting it by the last seen value. So now this query result becomes a difference in seconds for when the last time we saw a container was. And you can see it's consistently around five seconds, and then it goes back to zero pretty much. The graph tells the same story where let's get a little closer. Where if we go like this, you can see it's a constant spike or sawtooth, whatever you want to call it. Now what happens if we stop a container? First I'm going to narrow down the query to just a single container. So we add a name field in here and we can set this to our coin API like so. And then we get a single metric back which is this green line. Now what happens if I stop it? To stop the container, I'm going to get the ID using docker ps and the API is d81. So if I do docker stop d81 We'll get the ID back, meaning the container was stopped successfully. Let's go back to our Prometheus dashboard. And if I execute this query, we can see the sawtooth pattern goes away. And now this line is ever increasing because the container stopped. So obviously it's not seeing it. If I go ahead and start it again, this should go away. As you can see in the background, Docker restarted it with my terminal command and now we're back to the sawtooth pattern. So we can alert on something like this where if we haven't seen a container for more than 10 seconds or the value has been over 10 seconds for more than a minute that we can send an alert. And the other thing we can alert on is the excessive number of coin flips. Say the coin flips go over some random value. Remember flip count, the earlier command that we did um, I started and stopped the containers, that's why there's a gap here. Um, let's go ahead and flip it 300 times again. We see the value go up to 300 here, so our custom metrics are working as we tested before. Let's hop back into our CoinFlip API project, and let's define the alert rules 
for Prometheus and Alert Manager to use. So in the Prometheus directory, I'm going to make a new file called alert rules, like so, alert rules.yml. And in here, we're going to have the rules for when a container is down as well as when there's excessive coin flips. So it starts with groups, like so. And in here, we're going to define our alert rules with name, colon, alert rules. Uh, the interval at which Prometheus will ping for these rules. You can make it whatever you want. I'm just going to make it one second so that we see things pretty quickly just for this demo. And then now we're going to define the rules that we want to alert on. So now the first one is alert. So the first one's going to be the container not running. I'm going to call it like so, container not running. And after the alert name, you define what the expression is. I'm going to alert when two containers aren't running. And that will be the coin API as well as Grafana. And we saw before that sawtooth pattern. So we're going to make use of that query here where if time, well, first actually I need to, because it's a block expression, I have to put that vertical line there, meaning it's multiple lines. Uh, we're going to put, we're going to do time minus container. Let's play it smart here and just grab it. You can, you can grab it from the dashboard. So just so we don't spell things wrong, uh, it's going to be container last seen Grafana is greater than 10 or container last seen for autocomplete is our friend here. As you can see, this query works. Let's say time for coin API is greater than 10. And this has to hold true for one minute, meaning that the container last seen has had a value for more than 10 seconds. This difference here uh, and um, meaning we haven't seen the container for over 10 seconds and this has been true for over a minute, meaning yeah, this container is dead, need to alert on it. I'm going to add a label, which is severity, and we'll say critical. I'll demonstrate the labels uh, once the alerts start popping up in Prometheus. And then now let's add some annotations to our alert so that when it fires in Discord, we'll have some associated messages with what's going on. So the first one is a summary. And we're going to just say container and then the you can use the name of the container inside of your summary using quotes and then two curly braces. Well, using using two curly braces, you can get the name of your container like so. And then we're going to do labels dot name. You don't need to do the double quotes on the outside, but it helps format it. So it'll say container double quotes and then the container name like container quote Grafana is not running. And then we can add a description for some extra details like and here's where I'm actually going to wrap the whole thing in single quotes and you'll see why in a moment. So we'll say container and then we'll just steal this from up top. Labels.name has been down for more than. And then we're going to tell the person, whoever's on call, the site reliability engineer, how long the container has been down for. And that is referring to whatever the expression is up here. And to get that value, we can do, let's make this smaller so we have some space. We can do two braces again. We can do dollar sign value and then pipe, vertical line, whatever you want to call it. Print F percent dot zero F and then seconds. Now, why am I doing this? It's just to format the alert a little nicer. 
If you recall in the table when I run this query, uh, the value we get back is a very you know long decimal, but uh, doing this printf will effectively do the same thing as this, where if you just wrap the whole thing in a round, like so, and if we execute it, see how it is a whole number. So this makes the alerts a little nicer. And I didn't want to put a round up here just so that we can still make use of the exact value in the alert. But then when it comes to the description, we can just you know print it a little nicer. Cool. Okay, and then now it's time to define one more, which is uh, a lot of coin flips happening. So we'll just call it a lot of coin flips, like so. Um, the expression here is a lot simpler. So flip count. The flip count metric uh, for the job being coin API. And we'll do a span of one minute like so. A lot of parentheses and curly braces here. I know it can get confusing. Uh, multiply that by 60. And then if that exceeds 1,000, then we should send an alert, which pretty much means that if we're getting over 1,000 flips a minute, we can say, hey, there's a lot of flips. Maybe we should scale this up run 100 EC2 instances or something. Obviously this is for demonstration purposes, you can make it whatever you want. Um, and then we'll just say that it's for one second instead of one minute, um, so that it alerts a little quicker. We'll see it pop up. Uh, labels, same thing, I'm gonna just steal it from up here. So yeah, it's critical. And then the annotations, I'm also gonna steal this, but I'm gonna reformat it, so just to save me typing the whole thing out again. So annotations, make sure that's all indented correctly. Um, the summary for this one, I'll just say the coin flip server is experiencing a lot of coin flips. Did I even spell this right? Let's see. Let's go to Chrome if I just look it up. Yeah, I did. Cool. Okay. So for the description, what I'm going to do is I'm going to still make use of that printf pipe logic. And I'm going to uh, first, let's take a look at this query, like just this raw query. So time 60, right? Let's go back to our dashboard. Let me run this again. 300. Let's do a bigger value. Let's do 22,300. Come over here. Let's paste that query that I got from the earlier file, you can see that it has a, again, crazy decimals at the end. And you can see that, you know, things are going up. So this is the expected coin flips per minute or, you know, at, you know, average calculated, whatever. Um, let's, let's keep this here so that um, it gets rounded to a nice number. So it'd be like 28, 23, 831 or something instead of, you know, point, does it really matter? Do we need to be that granular with our alerts? So. Um, let's go ahead and uh, finish this description. So I'm going to say an estimated value. So estimated, you know, blank coins have been flipped in the last last minute. Boom. There you go. All right, our alert rules file is done. Now let's head over to Prometheus.yml yaml which is right here in the same directory so alert rules is in prometheus now i'm going over to prometheus.yml and i'm going to add a, another line here called rule files and we're going to include our file that we just made alert rules.yml nice all right with all that done let's go over to our containers that are running. You can see that this exited because I started and stopped it earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and stop everything. Cool. And once that's done, I'm going to build it again. And by rebuilding it, we're going to incorporate our alerting rules into Prometheus. So it looks like things are running. Let's go over to Prometheus on 9090 go over to alerts and you can see that our alert rules popped up in the alerts tab here container not running you can see it's the same thing that we had earlier and a lot of coin flips the first thing i'll test 
is if we have a lot of coin flips. So let me rerun this metric. And you can see if I refresh this, it starts alerting on this, where this query here, if I make a new tab, let's go ahead and run this query. You don't really need this greater than a thousand, or you could keep, it doesn't matter, you get the same number back. But you can see that it's exceeding a thousand by a lot. It went down, it went back up. Let's go ahead and get closer with the last like five, 10 seconds. Um, come over here and you can see the labels. We get things like job, the instance, and this is customizable. So if you want to add more labels, by all means. So our coin flips works. Um, and because it's by minute, uh, it'll go away. It'll resolve itself if there's no flips that are resulting in over a thousand in the next minute. Now let's go ahead and try the container not running. So making a new terminal instance, wherever you want. Let's go ahead and run Docker PS to get the IDs of the containers we want to stop. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the coin API, which is the same thing as before. So you can just bring back this command, docker stop d81. And once it's stopped, we'll go back over here. We'll see that the alert for one of the containers is pending. And this is because it's had a value of over 10 seconds. However, it's not been like this for a minute. So the alert is still pending. It's not firing yet. It's not as instant as the lot of coin flips one. But you can see again, the severity labels here. You can see things like the name of the container. All right, I waited a minute, I refreshed, and you can see that now the alert is firing because it's had a value of 90 seconds for more than a minute. Cool. We can go ahead and test the other one if we want, but I'll save that for the Discord bot alerting to prove to you that the logic for both alert rules on the containers not running works.